David and Goliath, one of the first Bible stories taught to young children in Sunday school, is a timeless tale that has permeated our culture. It is spoken of metaphorically. Countless speeches have referred to the hero David rising to the challenge and confronting the evil giant. Let's take a look at the story in the Old Testament in the book of Samuel. The size of Goliath cannot be overstated. His spear was likened to a weaver's beam used in the looms of the day, and would have been about two and a half inches in diameter. For comparison, a soda can measure about 2.6 inches in diameter. The spearhead weighed about 15 pounds or 6.8 kilograms. Goliath wore a coat of mail armor which weighed 125 pounds or 57 kilograms. In comparison, the current United States Army's improved outer tactical vest or IOTV, the standard issue body armor worn by ground combat units, weighs about 33 pounds or 15 kilograms. Obviously, it took a man of an incredible physical stature to wield such an enormous spear wear armor weighing the equivalent of an average 15-year-old American male, and have a normal-sized man carry a shield in front of him. Unlike this depiction by Gerhard Fugel, in which he is carrying his own shield. Goliath's height is described using cubits and a span. A cubit is a unit of measurement used by ancient people in which a forearm length from the tip of the middle finger to the bottom of the elbow equals a cubit. A span is a distance from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger. Cubits vary among cultures, and from multiple sources, I've heard that the, the cubit used in the Bible is actually 25 inches, which makes things a lot muddier. Using the Egyptian one, he'd be taller than a regulation basketball rim. He'd be 11 feet tall. If we use the biblical one, he'd be 13 feet tall. From this point forward, I'll use a common cubit, which is 18 inches for simplicity's sake, which makes him about 10 feet tall. A giant in the book of Deuteronomy is described as being about 12 feet tall if we use proportional measurements to how tall we are and how long our beds are. This basically just shows multiple counts of giants in the Bible. Goliath lived among his fellow Philistines. He was an elite warrior, not a recluse. This relates to ancient stories in an elite class of giants in North America. There's evidence of giant skeletons in, that are buried elegantly in burial mounds. Anyways, the Israelites feared him. But David had the courage to defeat him, and did. In 1519, Hernan Cortes landed on the Yucatan Peninsula with about 500 soldiers. His arrival was eerily similar to the prophecy said to be fulfilled that year of the return of the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, the Feathered Serpent. Cortez was no deity though, Cortez was just a man driven by a lust for gold and power. He would bring the mighty Aztec Empire down to its knees. There was an Aztec hero though who fought against the Spanish, Zila Katzin. He lived among the Aztecs as did Goliath with the Philistines. He showed no fear of the Spanish, in fact he struck fear into their hearts. According to the account of Bernardino de Saun, Zila Katzin carried huge stones and pursued the Spaniards. He scattered them and dispersed them into the water. In Hernan Cortes's own letters to Charles V, he wrote this. The Aztecs had one formidable warrior of giant stature called Zila Katzin, who was wonderfully skillful with his sling, every stone he sent bringing down its man. He was made aim of all the Spanish archers and musketeers. His great stature making him easily distinguishable, but they could never hit him. On one of these days, 18 Spaniards were captured alive and sacrificed, their bodies afterwards cut up and distributed to be eaten. There's little to be said about the death of Zila Katzin, but it's assumed he was killed as Tenor's Tietlan fell. The story of Zila Katzin is not an isolated incident. There's legends all across Mesoamerica about giants. The group of giants known as the Kina Metzin lived on Earth during a previous age. These giants who stood at over 10 feet in height were responsible for building the city of Teotihuacan and the pyramid at Cholula and founding of various other cities. The end of the reign of giants is something we've heard before in other myths. The gods sent a series of catastrophes to punish the giants because they refused to worship them, similar to the giants who ran amok in the days of Noah before the Great Flood. In an Indian myth, the creator made people from large stones. They were giants who greatly displeased their god. They were wiped out with a flood. The world over, the similarities in the myths are too much to ignore. It cannot be a simple coincidence. So the question is, what is the truth behind these stories? Thank you for watching. More videos to come, so make sure to subscribe, drop a like, and I of course encourage discussion in the comments.